Hello friends, warm greetings from a rainy New York. I'm Shobha from CNS and we are in conversation with Willow Brock, who is Senior Vice President, External Affairs at TB Alliance. Willow has extensive experience in resource mobilization for not just tuberculosis, but many other causes as well. We are speaking to him at a very opportune moment. Today is World Lung Day, and tomorrow is the first ever historic meet of world leaders to end TB, the UN HLM on TB. Willow, it is well known now that reducing TB incidence can generate benefit of $33 for every dollar spent. Even as far back as 2008, a strong evidence from World Bank report had shown that countries stood to gain $9 to $16 for every dollar spent at that time if they had fully funded WHO Stop TB strategy, 2006-2007. But despite this evidence, why is it that governments fail to see investing in TB as a strong business case? I never knew any such financial scheme that gives $33 in return for $1 spent. So could you tell us something about that? Yes, and thank you for having me, Shobha. This is a quite exciting period, as you said. Um, it is true that TB create a horrible financial burden on people and economies. Um, as an example, families are known to spend about half of their income managing their treatment for TB, even in cases where for instance, drugs and the treatment itself are um, uh, covered by the uh, healthcare system of their country. Um, and it's been estimated in another study that just for drug resistant TB alone, the global economy uh, could be hit with a 16.7 trillion, trillion loss, which is the equivalent of the EU's economy on an, on an annual basis. So there's a, a, a big impetus to, uh, to, uh, to act. But I think the answer to your question is that these uh, both the, the costs and the benefits are not at the same scale. So the costs are uh, often bear, uh, borne by very poor families and not necessarily by the governments. Um, and the investment that is needed into the, to the drug development process, for instance, uh, where, where we work at, is a very long-term gain. So politicians tend to like short-term results and not the long-term investments that are required to create that uh, return on investment that you mentioned. Uh, you have been instrumental in mobilizing resources, not just for TB, but also for other causes earlier. Why is it that even the private sector businesses have not been able to be that proactive in funding the fight against TB? Knowing very well that healthy workforce is key to their own survival, as well as knowing well that investing in TB yields huge returns. So why are they also not very proactive in investing? Well, one of the things you have to understand is that the, uh, the companies think in markets, uh, not in, in scale. So the fact that there are millions of people doesn't mean that there is a market. And given that the, the TB predominantly hits poorer people and poorer uh, communities, the private sector just doesn't see this as a place where they can make money. So they've decided to, to move away from this field. Um, and even though the uh, return, on investment, the return on investment of investing for countries is massive, um, the, the industry itself does, just doesn't get that uh, money in return. So that's why organizations like TB Alliance really exist, because you need to leverage partnerships, you need to bring uh, both public and private sector together um, to be able to, to mobilize, uh, first of all, the resources, and then have um, products that will have universal access um, at, a, at an affordable rate available to, uh, to patients that need it. Uh, when the need as well as recognition for new and better diagnostics and treatment for TB is growing every day. How come TB research and development is again underfunded year after year? When we know why is it so necessary and important to have better diagnostics, better drugs, and eventually a TB vaccine? 
Well, one of the things uh, when you look at it on a global scale is, first of all, if you look at, let's say, the high income countries, the wealthier countries of this world, for them, it's a problem of out of out of sight, out of mind. Um, they have less of a problem of TB. The, the scale is absolutely much smaller than elsewhere in the world. So they don't feel the need to invest. Um, if I look at the BRICS countries, the emerging economies, countries like India, South Africa, Russia, China, they have 50% of the world's burden, almost 60% of the world's burden when you look at the uh, drug resistant problem. But they're investing only five or less than 5% of the research for the, for the disease. Um, it is imminent that, that countries like this uh, are stepping up their fight because they cannot be longer uh, um, make themselves responsible for uh, dealing with the issue of TB without investing in the research as well as they maybe have done for other diseases. And otherwise, of course, we need to better explain the urgency of the problem, that this is a global health crisis, that this is not an issue that's going to go away. As long as people breathe, uh, TB will be a problem as long as we, eradicate, uh, as, as we don't eradicate it everywhere. Um, with that, obviously, with this high-level meeting, with heads of state turning their attention finally to TB tomorrow, that obviously is, a, is, a, is an important changing point, hopefully, in history, where TB will finally get the recognition that it's required. Uh, according to you, what innovative and sustained financing mechanisms may help bridge this resource gap uh, for uh, uh, to fund the fight against TB and also to invest more in r and D? I think there are two questions. Uh, one of them I already referred to, and that's a need for uh, for every country to committing a fair share of their um, of their investment into the innovation. This cannot be just something that we rely on high income countries to, to fund. Um, the resolution that will be adopted tomorrow, we, we hope is, is seeing that phrasing exactly there. So a country like India, for instance, um, India analysis only invests about 36% of their fair share. Um, if you look at the burden and the, and the status of a country like India. Um, I think the second question that we have to ask ourselves is how can we hold leaders to account? We've been, obviously, we've been known for this problem for 5,000 years. Why are we not asking before the heads of state to commit to these type of investments? Ministers of health are convinced. They understand the problem. But they need the help of their ministers of finance and their heads of state to say, we need to invest. We need to make this, uh, we need to make this investment for our people. So holding people to account, and the starting point tomorrow is very important for that, is an essential part of that puzzle. Uh uh, Velo, there is an increasing recognition that health security is critical for achieving SDGs. Is more attention to universal health coverage and other health issues going to be a threat or an opportunity for sustained financing for TB? Of course, I, I hope that it will be an opportunity. By expanding the services for people everywhere in the world to get access to health health they will also get access to TB services. So it's an important element of delivering TB treatments for everyone around the world that universal health coverage gets, gets increased. At the same time, when you invest in TB as a disease issue, you will reduce the cost of the healthcare system. You will make uh, uh, treatment available much, uh, at a much lower cost. Uh, for instance, at the moment, drug-resistant TB costs about 100 times more to treat than regular TB. So when we, when we have those new drugs available to treat patients with uh, what's currently called drug-resistant TB, it's going to be much cheaper for everyone to be able to get access to those healthcare, um, universal healthcare, as well as for what's called global health security. I mean, the risks associated with TB as an infectious disease, and especially drug resistance, of course, is one of the pillars of what's considered a global health security threat. Um, and with new treatments coming available for, for treatments against drug-resistant TB, we can take that thread down. We can therefore say that these three issues, TB, global health security, and universal health coverage are inextricably linked and need to be taken care of uh, um, together and not seen as a separate issue. What are the expectations of TB Alliance, particularly from this UN high-level meeting, which we are going to have tomorrow? Well, first of all, we think it's a landmark opportunity to marshal the political will uh, and the resources to end TB. I think this is the stage where heads of state globally around the world are finally going to say it's been to end, uh, end the disease and we, and we know we can do it. Um, we also therefore expect that all member states are finally stepping up the fight against the disease. 
Um, and what we do know is that we can defeat EB. We can defeat antimicrobial resistance in TB if we close the funding gap for innovation. And that's an important element of the, um, of the resolution. We also hope that that would be for everyone. So equitable approaches, securing universal access to, to new drugs, to new vaccines, to new diagnostics is essential. Um, patchwork national level solutions are slowing down the fight that we currently have against TB. Member states that, that intend to address TB need to really work together, collaborate cross-border, and not look at TB as a domestic issue. We need to solve this problem globally. Thank you very much, Willow. Friends, you were listening to Willow Brock, Senior Vice President, External Affairs at TB Alliance. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very you. much, Yuma.